to do. Especially with Mr. Fiesel coming about that convention. Well, I can't afford to be out of commission three or four days. Not even one day. Kate, we'll be here to look after things. Not even ten minutes. <laughs> That's not fair, Mom. We can run the hotel just fine without you. You'll run it into bankruptcy. Doc, don't just stand there. Cure me. I'm sorry, Kate, but the only cure for that foot is complete rest. Or the same thing could happen to you that happened to that ornery female over Ned Crockett. Yeah, she got back on her feet too soon after a sprained ankle. She'll never wear a shoe on that foot again. You hear that, Mom? Poor Mrs. Crocker. Oh, not Ned's wife, his mule. <laughs> Look, Doc. Oh, Mrs. Crocker's trouble is gallbladder. Her feet are in pretty good shape, though, considering. Doc, I may not have as many feet as some of your patients, but I gotta get on mine right away, or the Shady Rest Hotel is gonna be in nothing but trouble. Well, I'm sorry, Kate, but you are stuck right there in that bed. Mom, give us a chance. We won't let you down. I promise. Scout's honor. <laughs> All right, I have no choice. I leave the running of the hotel in your hands. Oh, yes. but just don't squeeze the stuffing out of it. Oh, you'll you have, have to worry about it, Mom. Mom. Okay. I'm real proud of you. I'm glad to see that you aren't as stubborn as my last patient. Thanks, Doc. Your last patient with a sprained ankle was Ned Crocker's mule. No, my last patient was Ned Crocker. That's the way the mule sprained her ankle, kicking Ned. <laughs> oh. All right, come on. Come on, all of you got to get out. I want to bandage that ankle. Come on. Mom, don't worry about a thing. When Mr. Fiesel gets here, we'll bowl him over. Oh, that's nice going, Billy Joe. That should make your mother feel better. Yeah, I'll take care of the whole shebang, Kate. Watch it, Joe, watch it. You want her to have a relapse? <laughs> all right, come on, get out. Go on, all of you. Don't worry. <laughs> we can do for her? You bet there is. Just live up to half the promises we made about making money for the hotel. That's no problem. I've been doing it for years. Making money for the hotel? No, living up to half the promises I made about it. <laughs> From now on, girls, this hotel is going to live dangerously. What do you mean? Well, we'll put in cleaning and valet service, paint the rooms all them fancy colors, and bring in some classy entertainment like I've always wanted. And that's just the beginning. Mom won't like it. Girls, your mother's a fine little well-meaning woman. And I hate to put it this way, but let's be honest. What happened to your mother's foot was a sprain. But to the Shady Rest Hotel, it could be a shot in the arm. Billy Joe, I don't know about this color scheme. Lavender and magenta? <laughs> Joe says if it's good enough for the Hilton East on Bull, it's good enough for us. <laughs> Uncle Joe just got off the cannonball. Good. And he's got a cute-looking fellow with him. Even better. Hey, he's a doll. I wonder who he is. He's not from around here. How can you tell? Betty Joe, can you imagine a dream of a fellow like that within a radius of 500 miles that I haven't met? You're right. He's not from around here. <laughs> Smoky, all covered with snow. Howdy, ladies. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Elgin Harner known as the Smoky Mountain Songbird, and I'm mighty pleased to meet y'all. Entertainer? Oh, how exciting! How about that? Entertainer, huh? Where was he entertaining? The Hooterville Pool Hall? No, as a matter of fact, it was the bowling alley. That's just because you're between engagements, right, Smoky? That's right, Mr. Joe. I was just warming up for my appearance next month at the beautiful new Green Dragon Club in Chicken Run, Tennessee. Uncle <laughs> Joe, are you planning to tell Mom about this? Well, as a matter of fact, I, uh, well, I, uh... No? I'll admit that's close. But this is Mom's hotel, and she ought to be the one... Now, child, to this hotel, I'm going to be an absolute necessity. Oh, come on. You show me a hotel with a singing guitar player, and I'll show you a hotel that's fighting off conventions with a baseball bat. No kidding? Well, for a true, my little black-eyed Susan, a good food and surroundings ain't enough for them convention fellers. They got to have entertainment, and it's up to the hotel they stay in that to give it to them. Well, that makes some sense, I guess. Well, thank you, ma'am, for your enthusiastic uh, welcome. I'll accept the job. Huh? Well, I gotta have $50 a week, a uh, private suite, and meals served in my room. We'll give you $10 a week, a room in the back, and you'll eat in the kitchen. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Smoky, 
Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's get back to work. Mr. Feasel will be here in about 48 hours, and when he gets here, I want him to find this hotel a paradise. <laughs> idea like redecorating this whole lobby in one day, do me a favor. What? Drop it. <laughs> that it, Kate? Why'd you have to go and be so darn clumsy and get us into all this mess? Yeah, Mom, why? The doctor says she'll have to stay in bed for at least another three days. And there's only one thing to do. What? Get a new doctor. <laughs> Is the hotel really in such bad shape? I mean, we've only been running it since yesterday. How long could it take to get it back to normal? Well, I figure if we work both day and night, including Sundays, about a month. We got to figure out something to do before that miserable old crank Feasel gets here. Have you got a room for a miserable old crank? The name is Hurley Feasel. <laughs> oh, Mr. Feasel. Welcome to the Shady Rest Hotel. Say, well, what a coincidence. We were discussing another miserable old crank named Feasel. I mean, another Mr. Feasel. He's a pig breeder over by Hooterville. You know him? No, and neither do you. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Feasel, we didn't expect you until tomorrow, sir. Yes, I know. I always show up before I'm expected. Catches people off guard. It's what I call a sharp business maneuver. It's what I call a sneaky trick. <laughs> no, she's right. It is a low, sneaky trick. Uh, keep your eye on that child. She shows promise. <laughs> now, uh, let me have the key to my room. I want to clean up a bit before I check every last inch of this place for my company's uh, uh, convention. And what I've seen so far is extremely tacky. <laughs> but we aim to please. Uh, room three, Mr. Feasel, our very best. Oh, no, not that one. That's the one I painted purple and chartreuse. It turned out kind of sickening. <laughs> Room, no, not five either. I aired it out last night and forgot to close the window. I don't think Mr. Feasel would like an owl for a roommate. Well, what's going on? What room do I get? Uh, nine? Room nine, Mr. Feasel, the only one we haven't had a chance to wreck. Uh, ruin, uh, you'll love it. The only thing I'll love right now is a nice, relaxing bath. Well, you'll love our bathtub. It's a corker. It better be. <laughs> We got through that. I'm sure glad he didn't say he wanted a hot bath. <laughs> Did I tell you the funny thing that happened this morning while I was fixing the hot water heater? <laughs> we need the money that convention will bring in, Uncle Joe, and I'm counting on you. Whatever Mr. Feasel wants, see that he gets it. Oh! <laughs> he just got it. <laughs> that sounded like Mr. Feasel screaming. Screaming with delight. I've never seen a man that enjoyed his bath so much. <laughs> up of old Smokey, all covered with... What was that? Smokey Harner, Smokey Mountain Songbird. An entertainer? Oh, but you show me a hotel with snappy entertainment, and I'll show you a hotel that's fighting off convention with a baseball bat. You know something? You're right. Makes sense. I got to hand it to you all. You're a lot smarter than your pumpkin-headed old mother. <laughs> well, uh, we better go now, Mom. <laughs> of all the baths I've ever taken, that was without question. Goodness. I never heard anybody get so much out of a bath as Mr. Fees. <laughs> I figured after his ice-cold bath, he'd be in the mood for some piping hot tea. Yeah, poor fella. From top to toe, absolutely the bluest man I ever saw. <laughs> By the way, where is the old human icicle? Lady Joe is out and back showing them our picnic area. It might be a good place to hold the meetings, if we get the convention. And boy, have I got my fingers crossed. Ah, oh, relax, honey. It's a cinch. I'll admit we got started on the wrong foot to begin with. But with you girls charming him, me out braining him, and our secret weapon, the Smoky Mountain Songbird, entertaining him, He's a setting duck. Duck? Did I hear somebody say duck? The <laughs> way I like mine's roasted with plenty of yams and grits. Now listen, Smokey. Well, now, 
This will tide me over till the duck's ready. Get away from that. We hired you to entertain Mr. Fiesel, and so far all you've done is eat. Yeah, you've been here one night and 11 meals. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to build up my strength for my big performance. Here now, how about one of them cookies? <laughs> well, the only thing I had since breakfast is lunch. No, not until you've worked for it. You can start right now, because Mr. Fiesel's coming. Right now? Right. It better be good to make up for all you're eating. Oh, well, uh, I'd dearly love to do it. I would. Uh, but, uh, see, uh, well, I got this sudden pain in my plinking hand. <laughs> also, my plinking hand. <laughs> Ooh, it smarts. They didn't hurt when you reached for the cookies. Oh, man, now, maybe that's how, how I damaged them. Best I go upstairs and soak them. Smokey, just forget the plunking and plinking and sing. Oh, I can't do it, Mr. Joe. An uh, uh, injured hand always oh, clobbers my voice. ooh -ee. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Fiesel, how did you like the lovely grounds of the lovely Shady Rest Hotel? Lovely, eh? Oh, lovely. Lovely freezing water, lovely confusion at the front desk. In fact, Mr. Carson, everything around here is so lovely that nothing could possibly make it worse. Here, Mr. Fiesel, have some cookies. We made them ourselves, and they're typical of the fine food that you get here at the Shady Rest. <laughs> All right, so I was wrong. There is something that could make it worse, and I just bit it. is finally tucked away for the night. Fresh laundry and all. Fresh laundry? Sure. Right after he almost choked on that overcooked disaster known as dinner. He asked if the laundry and valet service would wash and iron some of his clothes for him in a hurry. They got all wrinkled in his suitcase on the trip down here. You did it quick, didn't you? I promised him half our service with no extra charge for starch. You bet I did it quick. His clothes were back in his room in exactly 29 minutes, with plenty of starch that we won't be able to charge him for. I'm happy to report that's the last I've heard from him. Oh! Until now. No, he's not back in that bathtub again. Mr. Fiesel! Mr. Fiesel, what's wrong? <laughs> About the three tons of starch you put in my laundry. Well, there's no extra charge. Policy of the house. <laughs> oh, goody. And another thing. There's more? Oodles more. <laughs> if there's one thing I can't stand as a roommate, it's an owl. <laughs> Darn it. He changed rooms. What? There's no extra charge. Policy of the house. Good gumdrop. And I trust there will be no extra charge for my early checkout in the morning, before dawn, if possible. And without breakfast. You're leaving, Mr. Fiesel? Before they carry me out. <laughs> Are you sure this place isn't the local branch of Devil's Island? <laughs> folks. Had to make call over at Ned Crocker's. His mule's better, but his wife's got the miseries now. Thought I'd walk over and look in on Kate. Oh, Dr. Roan, you've got to get Mom back in shape. Doc, what's new in the world of miracle cures? If Mom fixed him one of her special breakfasts in the morning, maybe she could get Mr. Fiesel to still change his mind. I have no idea what you're all blabbing about, but I can tell you one thing. I am not going to let my patient back on her feet until she is completely cured. I told you there is no shortcut, you know. Well, she's practically perfect by now, Doc. This morning, her groaning sounded much healthier. Yeah, she's perfect. Yeah, well, I'll take a look at it. <laughs> you know, kid, I just can't figure this. Unless it's plain grit or orneriness. But do you know that that ankle is 100% cured? <laughs> and it's at least two days quicker than I expected. You mean that I can get out of bed? Well, sure, right now, if you want it. Oh, boy, do <laughs> I want to. <laughs> Doc, you want to dance? Well, I... No, no, you probably know only those old-fashioned steps. I want to do some of the new ones like that. Cha-cha-cha. Or maybe the Big Apple, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. I'll tell you, kid, that family of yours down there is going to be awful glad when I tell them you're back in your feet again. Oh, they sure will. The... Doc, no, Doc, don't tell them. Hmm? No, no, not right now. Not for a few days. Don't tell them. 
What are you doing, Kate? Trying to make them suffer or something? No, no, just the opposite. I, I, uh, I, I, I just want them to, 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 to feel better. You see, this is the first time in their lives that they have ever done anything on their own without me standing behind them telling them what to do. Yeah, you are the bossy type, all right, I don't know that. Well, I figured you would. <laughs> but you know, at first, I didn't think they could get along without me. But look at the way the hotel is running smooth as silk. Mm. Now, I just want them to enjoy their victory for a little longer. Well, Kate, I... Now, now, you are not to say one word about my foot being cured. I'm going to stay here for another two or three days and let them enjoy themselves. And I'm going to enjoy myself, too. I got a whole pile of Billy Joe's movie magazines that I haven't even touched. <laughs> All right, dear. All right. Well, uh, good night, everyone. Good night, Dr. Good night. Thanks, Doc. I guess. Three more days in bed. That's positively inhuman. Uncle Joe, the only thing that really counts is Mom's health. And we'll just have to solve our problems without her. All right? All right. You know anything about Harry Carey? Uncle Joe. Just a passing thought. Well, we're not going to give up yet. We're going to take one last stab at making Mr. Feasel change his mind. And I know exactly the weapon we're going to use. A heavy, blunt instrument? <laughs> Smokey Harner. You mean he's going to hit old Feasel over the head with a heavy, blunt instrument? No. He's going to sing to Mr. Feasel. Oh, gee, Billy Joe, I don't know. Why not? It's worth a try. They say that music soothes the savage beast. That's true. And old Feasel's about as savage a beast as you're likely to find. <laughs> I just can't, Miss Betty Joe. You gotta understand, I, I'm a serious artist. I ain't accustomed to, to singing before eating breakfast. You'll sing before breakfast or you'll be empty after lunch. <laughs> Honey, look, I, I dearly love to sing, night or day. What's the difference? Shh, Smokey, are you ready? Mr. Fusel's about to come down the stairs. Well, just a minute, I'll, I'll see. <clears throat> Me, me. He's ready. Sing, songbird. Me, 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 me. <laughs> On top of old Smokey, all covered with snow, I lost my true lover from a court in too slow. Stop it. Stop I'm it, I tell you. Old, but Mr. Weasel, sir. The name is Mr. Feasel, sir. I mean, Mr. Measle. <laughs> the name is Mr. Weasel, and stop playing that song. But, but I... There are a lot of songs I hate, but that is the one I hate the best. <laughs> Quick, Smokey, sing something else. Well, I can't. Uh, it's the only song I got in my repertoire. No. Yes. But I thought you were going to sing in a club in Chicken Run, Tennessee. Well, uh... Chicken Run's a very small town. <laughs> this hotel is the daffiest place I have ever run across. And I've done some mighty daffy running across. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now, look, ladies. Uh, I can explain everything. Honest, I can. Uh, on top of bowl smoke. <laughs> bound to find out about this sooner or later. Well, later is the best. By that time, she'll be as strong as an ox again, and the shock won't hit her so hard. Well, that makes sense. Well, naturally. It's the right idea, ain't it? Some idea. Mom's not going to be as strong as an ox by tonight. And that's when you told her Mr. Feasel would be back with the convention. Well, that's true. But I said my idea was right, not perfect. <laughs> Poor Mom. She's doomed. The shock's liable to keep her in bed for weeks. Wait a minute. There is a way to keep her from finding out the truth for a couple of days until she gets her strength back. Now, listen carefully. Here's the idea. Now, I'm stuck up in bed alone. What we have to do is go. Then Jeffrey drew her closely to him and whispered hoarsely in her ear. Wait a minute. Do you hear something? Is that all he can think of at a time like that to whisper hoarsely in her ear? <laughs> no, Mom. What I meant was I thought I heard something downstairs. Maybe it's those madcap conventioneers. You know, this is about the time they should be arriving. Oh, I sure hope so. 
You know, I won't be at rest until they get here. You'd be amazed at the things that could happen before. It's them. They're here. Oh, it sounds like they're having a great time for themselves, if you ask me. Wow, there must be 40 of them, Mom. Oh, wow is right. Quite a racket, huh, Mom? Well, it may sound like a racket to you, Billy Joe, but to me, it sounds like money in the bank. I'd better go down and make sure all those wonderful, generous conventioneers are taken care of. Yeah, but well, why don't you kiss a couple of the nicer-looking ones for me? In a very ladylike way, of course. Of course. <laughs> And I'll tell Mom the conventioneers are outside having their meeting about the business. They're... If there's anything I love, it's a party. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Very good. Betty Joe, get a plate and napkin, some silver. Now, uh, I, um, uh, I decided to hold a convention here after all. But I thought you hated this hotel. I do. But you see, the 40 men who will be coming here for the convention are uh, trainees. A young new salesman who will be going out on the road for my company. Yeah, but what has that got to do with... Well, I figured the best thing to do is give them a couple of days of this hotel. After that, they'll be able to stand anything. <laughs> Where do they taste this food? Why, it's a... Uh, it... Uh, uh... Good heavens, it's delicious. <laughs> Why, it's marvelous. Why, it's the best chicken and dumplings I ever tasted. Well, thank you. What happened? Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> You've ruined everything. <laughs> oh. Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.